So what he say if you're working for the mob and you have two nicknames, you must be pretty good. This guy was known as Trigger and also as the Hell's Kitchen Hitman. Now, Elmer Trigger Burke, born in 1917, was one of the most notorious hitmen's hitmen of the mid to late 1940s. He was brought up by his older brother Charlie, and in 1941, he was sent to reform school, but later had his sentence cut for joining the army, where he served the Italian campaign as an army ranger. Later, he served a sentence of two years in Sing Sing for robbery. Now, during his time in jail, his idol and brother Charlie was murdered by a man called George Gold. Gold was arrested and later released. To get revenge, Burke shot Gold in Manhattan at the age of 27. From then on, he earned his nickname Trigger because he would shoot people behind the ear. So the police caught up with him because of his pattern hits. Elmer used to say he didn't hold up the police station only because he get paid by a checks. He would eventually shake down businesses in Manhattan and have them pay him for protection. Later, he murdered Edward Poochie Walls, who was sitting in a bar with his friend Squeaky on July 12, 1952. He shot Poochie because he attempted to stop Burke from shaking down the bartender for protection money. Walsh was already being paid by the same bartender for protection. Walsh broke up a fight Burke had had with the bartender earlier today. Then Burke left the bar but came back with his 45 and shot Walsh in the face. Burke was also dating Poochie's sister at the time and uh, Bur uh, Burke usually used the gun to settle fights because he was approximately 5 foot 7 at 140 pounds and again always used his 4 to 5 to settle it. Now he came to major prominence for his efforts in the Brinks job, which was a notorious uh, robbery back in the 1950s. He was only considered a supporting player. In 1954, the mobsters would pull off the record ice, hired Burke to murder Joseph Spex O'Keefe, one of the brains behind the million dollar Brinks robbery, because the mob believed O'Keefe, who was under pressure from the police, would turn stooly. Now, Burke took the job and traveled to Boston. Hunting O'Keefe, he found him in Dorchester, Massachusetts in a housing project and chased him for a half an hour, firing dozens of rounds at his fleeing quarry. He finally shot O'Keefe in the leg after 35 minutes. Thinking he had killed him, Burke got into his car and drove off. He remained in Boston as a sightseer and did not leave the city. Now, O'Keefe later contacted the police and swore a complaint against Burke for attempted murder. He was eventually arrested eight days later in Back Bay, Boston, and incarcerated at the Charles Street Jail. Burke eventually escaped, but was recaptured a year later while waiting for a bus in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, Burke was arrested after a manhunt by Major K Squad homicide, homicide detective first grade Romano Imundi and convicted and was convicted of murdering his friend Longshoreman Edward Walsh and was sentenced to death in the electric chair, no doubt because of the additional charges that would have came against him. Now on the January 9, 58, after eating a final meal of steak, smoking six cigars and spending his last evening reading newspaper clippings about himself, he was executed at Sing Sing. As he was placed in the chair, he waved and smiled at the crowd that had gathered to witness his execution. Anyway, what, what a life in crime, ladies and gentlemen, and as we like to say in the North Shore, if you're going to go, if you're going to go, go with a smile. Have a good day. Bye.